Hi everyone, my name is David Rao, and I'm the music teacher who blogs at makemomentsmatter.org. You can also find my ideas on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, on Pinterest, and a variety of other places when you search for my name, David Rao, or Make Moments Matter. I'm excited to share with you um, my lessons tonight. Um, <clears throat> so what I normally do in these videos is share my kindergarten through fifth grade lessons for the week, maybe do a focus on one grade level to talk a little bit more about the intricacies and pedagogy of that level. Um, last week with all the back to school stuff, I only really got through kindergarten through fifth grade. So this week I'm gonna be doing a little bit more focus um, on three through five, if possible. I'm gonna get, um, get through as much as I can. So a couple quick things. Um, <clears throat> you can always access um, my content here. Um, it's always stored on Facebook and Instagram, but I also try and archive videos on YouTube if you're interested in that. I repost the videos as um, sound on a podcast if you want to listen on the go. That's totally an option for you too. Um, you can also find, as I talk tonight, I'm going to talk about like resources and songs and links and things um, for the, the lessons that I'm sharing. <clears throat> and so you can go to my blog to find those links or if you're on Instagram or you're on Facebook right now You can go to the bottom of the caption for this video and click the link and it'll take you directly to the links page um, For the for the video tonight. You can also find it go to make moments matter.org and click the video tab um, A couple more things if you're interested um, I have a Facebook group It's called every moment matters music education community and if you join that group um, you can ask questions you can join in conversations you can talk about resources things how they work um, and you can um, you know make a connection I know that sometimes those really huge like 20,000 music teacher Facebook groups you get you ask a question you get a barrage of weird answers or maybe helpful answers or maybe an overload of answers so if you join the Facebook group um, that that I started a couple years ago I hope that you get a great answer and I'll definitely try and see those questions and um, type an answer myself if I have a second couple more things. Um, I'm going to be doing live in-person workshops. You don't have to see me through your computer screen if you don't want to or listen to me on the podcast. You can see me. Um, I'm doing four workshops in the co coming weeks. One with the Greater Chicago ORF chapter on September 18th. Um, one with the St. Louis ORF chapter on September 25th. The Greater Milwaukee ORF chapter on October 2nd. And the Heart of America ORF chapter here in Kansas City on October 9th. I'd love to see you in person. Um, if you're um, looking for a great workshop opportunity or a pedagogy learning PD opportunity, um, those are coming up and they're all in person. They'll all be masked um, and we'll be hopefully having a great time learning together. And one more thing, um, Teachers Pay Teachers, you all know I, I create resources and I try and share them on Teachers Pay Teachers um, so that you all can have access to those and, and find resources there. There's a big sale going on tomorrow and the day after um, where everything pretty much is um, on sale and you can get uh, great discounts on stuff. And I'm actually doing a giveaway for a Teachers Pay Teachers gift card. If you go to my Facebook page, you can. Um, all you have to do is just add something you're really... Um, really excited about for the year. I can't remember what exactly I said the prompt was. Uh, an activity you like doing social distance. I don't remember, but go there, find it, and you can enter to win a gift card. I'm so glad that I posted that a half hour ago and I can't remember what I said. Oh, also, well, one last thing I promise and then I'll get going. Um, so I'm doing, um, trying something new this year um, with these Musical Mondays videos um, for Facebook, at least. I'm trying to stream them a little differently with a little bit better technology, I hope. Um, and so I'm using a new microphone, a new camera, and if you can hear me better or see me better, great. If you can't hear me at all or see me, I guess you wouldn't be able to respond. But if you can't hear me at all, please let me know and I'll try and fix settings and, and see if um, I can make that work a little better. Okay, so let's get into lessons for the week. I'm going to try and spend as much time as I can talking through these. Last week when I did this, I only got through uh, week one of kindergarten, first, and second grade. So I'm hoping tonight to get through week two of kindergarten, first, and second grade and then talk you through both week one and week two of third through fifth grade. Um, so just so you know, my schedule this year is different. Um, what I'm teaching is I see kids twice a week for a half an hour. So if you say like, wow, that's a really quick lesson or not a lot of content in that lesson, right, because I got to get it done in 30 minutes. Um, every hour, so like we have an hour of fourth grade, so I would have kids for a half hour and then the PE teacher would have a class for a half hour and we switch. And so a half hour into the hour of teaching, we switch cohorts. So I'll have a different class. in. so that means it's nice because I get to see kids more frequently. I see them twice a week for a half hour, uh, but it means I really have to plan 
um, <laughs> for shorter periods. This first time I like made all my lesson plans and, and for these first couple weeks and I like super overloaded them because for the past like five years I've been teaching like 45 minute or 50 minute lessons and I just had way too much, um, which is good, right? It's good to plan more rather than less. So it's, it's good to have more options. But anyway, my classes are that just so you know, if you're hearing these lessons and going, wow, these are a, an interesting size. Yeah, it's just 30 minutes twice a week. So in the in the first two weeks, I saw kids four times for a half hour each. Okay. Sorry, I, I know I said I was going to jump right in. One last thing. I told y'all last week that um, one of the things that I'm doing in all my classes um, is I'm not wearing regular shoes. I'm wearing these like um, fun sort of, they're actually just water socks. Like they're the, like if you go into a lake, you wear these things. They do have tread on the bottom. Um, but I'm wearing them for a couple reasons. One, I'm getting up and down off the floor so often that uh, when I'm sitting like crisscross, you know, on the floor, if I'm wearing regular shoes, they're sort of clunky. They get in the way. They're not very comfortable. Uh, depending on what I'm wearing, it might be uncomfortable for my feet or legs or whatever. So I'm wearing these for comfort, but also because it allows me to move a little bit more freely and a little bit quicker. Um, I'm ORF trained and in ORF training, we do a lot of movement and creative movement and dance. And so this really lends itself to like more of a ballet or yoga or whatever setting where you're moving around a lot. In fact, people use water shoes a lot for yoga and, um, dance classes sometimes. So I'll, I'll just update after wearing them for two weeks. I'm now um, in my second full week of wearing them. They are still very comfortable. I feel like I'm wearing, I feel like it's like a cheat day, like a pajama day. Cause like <laughs> all day long, like I just feel more comfortable. So that's cool. Also, I feel like I'm moving a little bit more freely and more comfortably um, in through students around getting up and down more. And so it's definitely encouraging that, which I think is great. So anyway, week two, would recommend. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing it. Um, I, I can give you the, the link for these if you want, but they're just water socks. You can also, there are a bunch of other options. There are things like uh, fit kicks and yoga shoes. There's dance shoes, um, ballet slippers. People wear whatever they are most comfortable with. These are very comfortable for me. Thought I would check in. I'll let you know if in a couple weeks, like my back really hurts, like I shouldn't have done this. I don't know. I'll let you know um, how, how that keeps going. But so far, so good. <laughs> I'm pretty really happy. Okay, so like I said, uh, last week I only got through uh, week one of kindergarten first and second. So I'm just going to try and sort of zoom through week two for kindergarten first and second, and then I'll give weeks one and weeks two for third, fourth, and fifth grade. Okay, so kindergarten. In the previous lessons, like all of my classes start with this choo-choo train song. I talked about it last week. I sang through it, but just really quickly it goes... Choo-choo train, choo-choo train, copy me and do the same. Choo-choo train, choo-choo train, woo, woo, stop. It's so simple. It's a so me pattern. Um, and what do I do with it? When I meet kids at the door, we walk in, in a line, we walk around the room. And basically we, we, we pretend like we're a train. And why do I do this? A couple of reasons. One, it teaches them to follow the line. It teaches them to follow me, you know, for those follow me activities where you're trying to get them into a certain um arrangement. One of the cool things is that it, you know, by the time we're done, we're in a circle shape. So I'm not fighting them to try and make a circle because I just sort of lead them around in a circular shape for the first two or three times. And then about the third or maybe fourth time when I see them, we'll come in and we'll do, you know, sort of an oval or a circle shape around the room. And then I'll start taking weird other paths where they have to follow me in sort of more like a, reminds me of that game Snake from back in the day. But we take other pathways so that then they're not they're not as bored with just like that same path. They really do have to focus in on where we're going um, so that we so that they get to the right place. But again, it's why I'm, it, it's fun because it's short, it repeats, they learn the song really fast. Um, it's a great interval for them to practice. Um, it's fun because they get to make like you know, siren sounds, woo, woo, and then we get to stop and freeze. Um, along the way I'm saying like, oh wow, I love how you're keeping your feet to, you know, you're taking nice little steps or, oh my gosh, I think I hear a singing voice over here or whatever to just keep reinforcing all the good content, all the good classroom management stuff that I want them to do while also teaching them a song. So in our third lesson, so in that, in that second week, it's our, my third actual lesson with the students. In that second week, we come in, we do the choo-choo train song. We f find ourselves to a circle. We do our little circle song. Come and make a circle, circle, circle. Come and make a circle all around. 
Take hands together, everyone together. Once we've made a circle, then we'll all sit down. It's just a simple little circle song, but again, teaches kids the procedures, make the circle, make sure everyone's a part of it before you sit down. So um, we do our choo-choo train, we do our circle song. In the previous lessons, we learned engine engine number nine, and I talked a little bit about that. In this lesson, we expand even a little bit more. So I added a B section to engine engine number nine. The A section, the, the main poem that I use, it's a different version than some people use, but it goes engine engine number nine going down Chicago line. See it sparkle, see it shine. Engine, engine number nine. And we add a B section that just goes and my hands are like trying to do like a train wheel, that connecting thing. <laughs> the wheel. Anyway, so we're just doing sort of a basic good steady beat there. We're making the, tr the train sounds. Um, what we do in the next lesson is, you know, then we, instead of doing just arms in the air, then we might just pat the steady beat on our knees. Um, we might pat it on our tummy. We might pat it on our shoulders, pat it on wherever, pat it on the floor. And then we'll eventually move it to our feet where we're standing in place and our feet are moving the steady beat. Once we're finally ready for it, and, you know, we'll go back, we'll do the poem, and then we'll try a new version. Let's stand and do it in place. We'll, you know, do the poem, we'll do a new version. Let's stand and mm, turn around in our spot or whatever. Um, eventually, I'm going to try and get them to all do circular movements where they're going choo, 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 up and around, like, like our circle shape. So we've got an A section, the poem, our B section is the choo, choo, choo sound. And it's just, again, it's to give them a little bit more interest in the poem. It's to practice steady beat. It's to get them moving together to keep that circle shape. It's a lot of little things all in one that we're trying to do in these first couple weeks. Then um, I step away from the group and underneath my mask, I put the slide whistle and we talk about, you know, we'd been making that train sound, the whistle sound. And so I take the slide whistle and I do my own slide sound and they love, they love the train whistle. Sorry if I just blew up the microphone. Um, they, they love the, the, the slide whistle sound and I, my slide whistle is funky because it, like if I have it right here, just a little bit out, it will it will like actually, okay, of course it's not going to do it for the video, of course, because when I want it to work, it won't work. Anyway, it slides out when <laughs> it's in my classroom. If I let it go, it'll like slide out on its own. Okay, obviously it's not working. Right. But it'll like slide out on its own. The kids think that's so funny. And then I'll hold it upside down and say, okay, well my, uh, it's, doing, it's doing it again. Oh, come on. And so then they think it's, oh, see, there it goes. It's sliding out on its own. They think that's so funny. And then I, you know, we, so I do that so that they can see like in and out and what that does. And then we, I show them how the sound changes um, when I play. And again, I just tuck this, the slide whistle up and under my mask to play for just a second. I think air is only really escaping up here. So it's still sort of escaping under my mask. So I feel okay about that. And I've stood back from kids. So um, anyway, we do the slide whistle and we talk about how we can do the slide whistle because our voice is sort of like a slide whistle. And so I do the the slide whistle and then we mimic with our voices sometimes we'll draw with our finger in the air to, to follow the path of what that sound might be if you're doing your own voice so if I did you could go and you go and again this is kindergarten like the first time so I do very simple just or or whatever I don't do anything like you know, like I don't do anything crazy. Like they, they cannot mimic that at this point, but we're just like giving them sort of a, a simple baseline fun thing to do. The, the slide whistle comes back all throughout kindergarten, um, throughout the year. And so this is like just the basic introductory start. Then I tell the kids about a kindergartner who just couldn't control his hands. It was just out of control because the, like he would be sitting there and his hands would be in his lap, just like they're supposed to crisscross applesauce spoons in the bowl. And then one hand would somehow end up on his shoulder. Oh my gosh, how did it get there? It's supposed to be in my lap. And then he'd be sitting there and one hand would, you know, wander off and like start touching a xylophone or something. Oh, oops, oh my goodness, my hands. I gotta keep control of my hands. Oh no. And then I teach them a song where they can learn to control their hands that goes, open, shut them, open, shut them. Give a little clap, clap, clap. Open, shut them, open, shut them. Put them in your lap, lap, lap. Right, so many of you probably know the song. There's a B section that goes, creep them, creep them, creep them, creep them, up to your chin, chin, chin. And 
the idea of this <laughs> song is like you're trying to teach your hands not to like wander off you're just being control of your hands and then this part goes open up your little mouth <gasps> but do not put them in 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 which i was like about to teach the song i'm like this is fun they think it's so funny and we're gonna keep our fingers from going in our mouth and then i was like this is not gonna work we're all wearing masks what's gonna <laughs> what am i gonna do and so then i just had to be like well before we all wore masks all the time um, sometimes I would find kids with their finger in their mouth wiggling it too. And so I just told them about like instances where kids would put their fingers in their mouth and oh my gosh, isn't that gross because of germs? And, oh, anyway, but we're going to pretend that our mask isn't even there and that our finger's going to glide right through and into our mouth and then we're going to say no, no, no and not let it in. And so, so like I sort of just smoothed over that like we're not, we're, we're all wearing masks and we can't actually physically <laughs> put our finger in our mouth. So that's great. But so anyway, so that we could still use the song, it was still fun. So we did open shut them that it's it really is honestly like a preschool sort of song but why do I teach it because it teaches kids where to put their hands how to be in control we talk then about like sometimes wandering hands and then I can you know later on in the year if a kid is touching something they're not supposed to I say uh oh better get in control of those hands and then it's more of like a fun redirect instead of like a better not touch that thing right it's more of like oh no your hand is wandering off like that boy i told you about you know in the song so it's again it's just reinforcing classroom management through a fun song and that's basically all you have time for in that lesson when they come back the, the last time uh in that second week um we do our choo-choo train around the room again a more complicated sort of path around the room we circle up we do engine engine number nine with a little bit more movement so like moving in a circle uh we might move in our place we might keep the steady beat on our tummy whatever just to again advance the level of difficulty just a little bit we do the slide whistle one more time now i'm getting to the point where i want kids to identify um you know, like a call and response, or I, I want them to uh, be able to do solos too. So uh, as I'm starting, what I do in this lesson is I grab my roster, which I have on my iPad. I, I told y'all last week about using Idokio, which is a, a sort of a um, classroom management slash grade book app. Um, and, and what I do is I just say, where is David? you know, whatever, just grab a kid's name. Where is David? And they get to go, here I am. And I go, there you are. Great. Where is Emily? Here I am. There you are. Where is Xavier? Here I am. There you are. And, and so they know, like, when I say their name, they get to say, here I am. And they can raise their hand. They can do a thumbs up or whatever. But they get to say, here I am. And I say, there you are. Great. Eventually, this is going to change from spoken word to sung. So, like, where is David? Here I am. There you are. And then eventually, it'll just be, hello, David. Hello, Mr. Rao. And it'll be a back and forth that we'll do, like, attendance. And it's just a way for us to use our sing voice. But I start out with them doing speaking with this very systemic or very predictable pattern that they know exactly what they're going to say. When they hear their name, they're just going to say, here I am. And, and they're usually pretty good at that. It's less scary when it's spoken the first time. It's less scary they know exactly what to say. Um, and so we go through and do that, but eventually it's going to become a sung response. And then we learn where is Thumpkin? Classic, wonderful. And again, this is to teach all the fingers of their hand. It really is, could be a preschool thing. Um, but again, I just do it because, um, it's, it's fun, it's easy, it's repetitive. Um, it, it's a great sort of starter song, again, using the fingers of our hand. We can talk about where we put our hand, what's appropriate um, hand movement, where we wanna put our hand, how we wanna be in control, all of that. And also, it links up with what we just did for the attendance. So, Thumpkin, where is Thumpkin? Here I am. And so it's the, you know, when I said, where is David? And he said, here I am. Perfect. You know, so it's again, sort of continue on of that link with the, the attendance, but it's also just a super fun song. They love it. Um, it's again, to teach them their fingers and what we might call them and then what's appropriate and what's not for putting your hands in your lap or being in control. You can also just have, have fun conversations. It's fun for kids to play. So the thumbkins can talk to you. Hello, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Oh, that's so nice to hear. Oh, thank you so much for asking. You know, like you can talk about interactions, all of that, which is great. Um, I did actually a whole video on some of these finger plays, so like open, shut them, where is Thumpkin? I think there's maybe one more I did, maybe Wee Willy Winky, I can't remember. Um, that's in my video archive if you want to go back and watch that. I do a long process on how I teach it and the steps for all of that, um, how to avoid kids like flipping each other off with Tall Man. <laughs> so I talk about that in another video if you're interested. Um, I don't think that's currently on the links page, but you could for, sh you could for sure... Um, look that up or send me a, a direct message. I'd be happy to send it to you.
Whew, okay, I got to keep going because I, I want to get to the <laughs> fifth grade today and I missed it last time. Okay, I talked last week about week one of first grade. So in that week, we did, um, you know, our basic sort of back to school stuff. Um, again, some of those introductory songs. So in week two, um, they come in, we do our circle song, come and make a circle, 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 same as kindergarten. Um, and then we, in the previous lesson, had learned B, B, Bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee. And of course, I pulled out, you know, my bee and my, my pig puppet. Well, for this lesson, they already know it. They know the process. So they came in, they made a circle. First thing we do as I pull out the bee, I just pull out just the bee this time. And we do um, the, the bee and we use the bee, not the pig. We use the bee just to do the poem, to do the elimination game. So remember with that game, last week I talked about it, but we do the whole poem. Bee, bee, bumblebee, stung a man upon his knee, stung a pig upon his snout. I say, you are out. Because that's maybe a different version than what some of y'all use, which is fine. Use whichever one you're more comfortable with. At the end, I know you can say, I say, you are out. And that one kid is like, out. That takes way too long <laughs> for my liking. So at the end, I go, so I say, you are out. Bzz, bzz, bzz. And the bee buzzes four kids, and those four kids are out. So that means that I can get through two versions of the game in just a couple minutes. What do I do with the winner? When we get to the winner, so like the first time through, you know, the last kid out, right? The last kid who doesn't get stung, the last kid of all, winner. That kid, I say, okay, come here. Let's say, I don't know, Charlie. Charlie, come here. Now, Charlie, you get to tell the kid. Okay, Charlie, repeat after me. Okay, everyone, listen up. Okay, everyone, listen up. Uh, when I say go, when I say go, you have to stand up. You have to stand up. So, like, the kid is repeating that. Okay, and I say, okay, whenever you're ready, say go. Okay, great. So, he gets to, the, the winner gets to stand up the kids. They get to make a circle, whatever. And so, then he's like, ha ha, I'm in charge. And then, the kid who wins gets to choose. We're going to do the game again. Do you want the bee to start with you? Or do you want the bee to start the poem with someone else? And this is actually a funny because sometimes when they're like, start with me, like the way the, <laughs> just the way the progression works, they might be eliminated right away. So I, I never say that, but like, I just know in my head, like, mm, better not choose you because you're going to be out right away. Anyway, so they get to choose wh who the bee starts with and which direction we go around the circle. It's a little thing, but it gives the kid a feeling of like, I made a choice and got to choose where the bee goes. So it's just a, a fun little thing to add in there. Um, and then we go to our seating chart spots. We leave the circle, go to our seating chart spots. I'm calling them this year, I'm calling them my singing spots. Um, we do the same thing I did with kindergarten. Where is Charlie? Here I am. There you are. Because again, I want them to start with a spoken response and eventually we'll go to singing response. Um, but this first couple times we do a spoken response. Um, we do a little activity. Of course, I didn't bring temple blocks home or piccolo blocks or whatever. Um, I, sh I should have. But what I do this first time is we just keep the steady beat. I, I play on the temple blocks and they have to keep the steady beat on their knees or on their forehead or on their whatever. And then I change to a different block and I say, does that sound different? You know, it's like, bum, 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 bum. You know, it's going to be a slight difference in sound. And so they'll say, oh yeah, that does sound different. Oh, great. Well, then we better keep that beat in a different way instead of just staying in your sing your singing spot when you hear this lower tone or whatever block i chose when you hear this lower tone you're actually going to move through the space but remember when we're moving through the space in between our friends you got to make sure you don't touch anyone and you don't touch anything so be careful where you go because i don't want you to accidentally like run into the stack of stools and knock them all over that'd be no good Right, so, okay, so this is like, again, it's getting them to practice steady beat, putting it in different places, listening for high and low sounds from the tempo blocks because they're, they're different signals they have to, or different things they have to do depending on the different sound. And also, it's teaching them how to move through the space. So you're like, you know, several birds with one tempo block. So anyway, so they do that. And then I, I switch and I have like the low tone be moving your feet and the high tone I say, just keep the beat in your hand somewhere. It could either be, you know, your hand tapping your chest. It can be the hand on your head. It can be your hand clapping. I don't care. But you got to keep the steady beat wherever I put it. So I'll do a couple examples of just moving feet right through the room. A couple examples of just keeping the beat clapping. And then I'll maybe mix it up and do like Walk, 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 clap, 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 walk, 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 clap, 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 clap. So they can hear and sort of mix the two together. Maybe I'll do like walk, walk, clap, 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 walk, walk, clap, clap, clap. We just do a couple examples of that. They tend to love it. 
they feel like it's a challenge even though it's not very challenging, but it's like right on grade level where they need to be remembering from the previous year. And it's good for them to hear the, the different timbres of the temple blocks. It's good for them to, to internalize that. And then we eventually move back to, the, to our seating chart spots. <clears throat> and to end the day, we, we've done a couple, the first two lessons we did Little Bunny Foo Foo, which is a classic in my, <laughs> my life. I've done it for so long. Um, <clears throat> then we've done the finger play version where the kids get to act it out, right? And in the previous weeks, I had my magic wand, which I found it, when, some, when there was a teacher trying to th th give it away, throw it away. And it makes that beautiful sound. Um, and actually, I don't know if you can see this. I think I showed this last week, but it changes colors. Anyway, delightful. So we did, I actually did, you know, a little version with um, manipulatives. Then we did the finger play version. And now um, I found a video online of a book called Little Rabbit Foo Foo by Eric Rosen. I'm trying to remember who wrote it. Um, but it's, it's different from the original story and there are several key differences. And so I found a version online on YouTube of someone reading the book. And um, so what I have them do is I say, you know our version, I've got this other version, we're going to watch it. And I want you to watch because I don't think it's exactly the same as our version. So you watch and when we're done, I'm going to ask you what you noticed was different. So don't shout it out when we're watching, just keep observing, keep watching. But at the end, I want you to tell me one of the things that you thought was different between our version and the version you saw on YouTube. So it's fun for them. It's, it really is good for them to pick up all the differences. You're comparing, contrasting. You're also seeing like a slightly different version and they just have a lot of fun with it. And the animated version is like super cute. You can actually get the book too if you wanted, um, but the, the video on YouTube is super quick, easy, fun. And that's the end of that lesson. When they come in the next time, we come in, we make our circle and then we do, um, yeah. Well, I, I do um, the where is so-and-so right away. I do the attendance right away. And then I say, okay, great. I've got a test for you just to make sure that we're all on the right track. Um, point to your head. Good. Point to your tummy. Point to your shoulders. Point to your ears. Point to your toes. Point to your, and then we'll eventually, point to your head. Point to your shoulders. Your knees, your toes. Your knees, your toes. Your head, your shoulders, your knees, your toes. Your, knee, your eyes, your ears. Mouth, nose. Head, Shoulders, knees, toes, knees, toes. Oh, you, that reminds me of something. A song I think I know. And so then we do the song, head, shoulders, knees, and toes. I found that kids are like, they, they know it from online or they know it from, you know, like, I don't know, the their daycare or whatever. But I feel like kids are more used to it speeding up. Like they're used to a version that accelerates. And so I'm doing the version where I take out words. And so instead of going head, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes, we sing it through a couple times and then I'll go, we're going to sing everything except the word head. Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. So we'll do that version where they actually have to just audiate or think that's that version in their head. Um, and so that, that's not the version that I think a lot of them are used to. So it's just fun, sort of a different, different way to do it. Um, then we sit down and we do um, steady beat in a circle. We make our circle. Sorry, we go all the way through. We take out all the words for our head, shoulders, knees and toes. And then we sing all the words one last time. It's like a final wrap up um, for the day. Head, shoulders, knees, and toes comes back next week. And then at, we sit down in our circle, we just keep the steady beat on our knees, we keep it on our head, we keep it on our shoulders, we keep it you know, crossed arms, we keep it in lots of different places. And then I say, you know, I think I have a really fun way to keep the steady beat. Since you've shown me that you remember from kindergarten how to do it, I think I have a super fun way to do it. So let me see, hold on. And I go to my, my closet um, or cabinet or whatever and I pull out here. I think this is gonna be so much fun. I've got this bag. And I pull out, oh yeah, perfect. This is gonna be just so great. And I feel a little bit like a clown, like following this long, forever, non-ending thing um, out of this bag. So what this is, is it's a stretchy band. It's a special kind of stretchy band um, from a company called Bear Paw Creek. And a lot of times if you've bought a stretchy band, you may actually own a Bear Paw Creek stretchy band. This is a special one because it is not connected. It's called a connect a stretchy band. Um, and it has these little clamps on the end. And then you, so you can connect it however you want. Now I have 
six pieces of connect a stretchy band that can make a very big stretchy band. If I don't need all of that, if I want two smaller circles, well then I just disconnect and I reform like three and three. So these different segments, they add quite a bit of uh, stretch and space. In my class, uh, the six segments is way big enough for a first grade class plus extra. And then, um, you know, we could, I, I could probably do it with four segments uh, but six is just super comfy. We can spread out as much as we want, which is great this year. And so what do we do once we all have the band? Well, I say choose one color only. So even if you're like close to where you could grab one hand on green and one on red, you got to choose. So choose one color, okay? And then we're going to keep the beat with that. So as they're, you know, patting on their knees, they're feeling other people pulling and moving. They can see other people move, moving it at the same time. And it's a super kinesthetic experience. And, and like even the teacher, me watching them and doing it with with them it's super fun so some variations so we can do um, different speeds slow medium fast we can do really big beats we can do little beats we can do um, with the stretchy band you can do in and out in and out you can do all sorts of things one other fun thing is you can do like scrunch pull scrunch pull I mean like you can do whatever um, it also has six colors on every segment so red green orange blue yellow and purple so I might say okay um, if you aren't if you're holding red orange or yellow let go and only the blue green and purple people try it this time okay and now switch you know so like it gives you lots of options for variety um, they think it's super fun and it's just one more way to practice steady beat and more interactive and again for some of those kids who are maybe having trouble sometimes if you set them next to a kid who's really good at it they're going to feel the actual beat and so it's going to be sort of fun and helpful if we have time at the end of class we start the peanut butter and jelly song we maybe don't always have time for that, but it's the one that goes peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. Peanut, peanut butter, and jelly. I'll talk more about that next week because I don't think I have time to go into it today. And in that lesson, we, we have time to learn maybe the chorus, and that's about it. Okay, in second grade, I talked about last week, we learned Ram Sam Sam. We did our free song with the scarf. Um, and we learned about our dot spots, our seating chart spots. So when kids come in this next time, we do come and make a circle, circle. So, so we do that, you know, again, K1 and 2, they all know that song. And they're all, you know, reinforced with that song. We do it again and again and again. Um, my second graders, though, I say, hey, next time you come into class, I'm just going to be standing there with my ukulele singing. Can you do all of this? on your eye. I mean, you're so smart now. Do you know how to like come in and once everyone's in the circle, can you seat yourself? Great. Okay. And so then that's what the, I set them up to do in the next lesson. We learn Charlie over the ocean, Charlie over the ocean, Charlie over the sea. And we learn that. We learn just um, the song. We're sitting in a circle. And so I do a very, very basic boring game that they are somehow into where at the very end of the song, and probably many of you are familiar with that song, um, a lot of times there's like a chase game. It's like a duck, duck, goose slash sort of Charlie chase version game. Um, and that's like the one that most people do. But I'm inside and I'm, it's like week two. I don't want kids to run into things, to smash into things. I'm nervous about that. So at the very end, um, the last part goes, can't catch me, can't catch me. And on that last part, I have the kid lean over and go, I caught you, you know, or like, you know, like, trying to use like a net or like pretend they have a fishing pole and whoever they're standing next to, they catch that kid. Ha <laughs> ha And then that kid has to stand up. For some reason, my kids are all about that. They're like, oh, I caught you. You, did, you said I couldn't catch you and I did. <laughs> and then they switch spots and that new kid walks around. Cool. Okay, it gets better in the next lesson, but I'll, I'll get to that in a second. Um, and then we do the poem. Um, I don't think I talked about it last week. Um, we do um, the poem called I'm Going on a Picnic. Um, and in that lesson, we uh, the poem goes, I'm going on a pic, or we're going on a picnic, a picnic, a picnic. We're going on a picnic, a picnic at the park. Maybe I did talk about this last week. Anyway, so we, we go on our picnic and um, we learn that poem. Super easy. We just keep the steady beat. Going on a picnic, a picnic, a picnic. We're going on a picnic a picnic at the park and then we get to say what we're bringing to the park and we talk about all the things you could bring um, and I you know as an example say like my name's Mr. Rao and I'm bringing radishes 
and the kids get to say, Rouse bringing radishes. Actually, I do think I did talk about this last week. Anyway, so we do that poem. It helps us learn names. It helps us come up with foods that match our name. So if your name is like Brenda, you can say, my name is Brenda, and I'm bringing bread. My name's Jesse, and I'm bringing juice. It's really hard for kids whose name is like Xander with an X. My name is Xander, and I'm bringing extra chips. I don't know. You can <laughs> come up, answer that however you want. Um, but we we do that, and by the end of the by the end of that, with Charlie and the the picnic game, we're pretty much out of time. Kids come in the next time. We do um, our circle song. We do where is David? Here I am. There you are. And again, it's going to change to sing basically the next lesson. We do Charlie over the ocean. But this time, to make it sort of like a chase game, you know, we go around on that last word. I say, okay, now watch this. And the kid who I end up on, I tap them. And then instead of running, I, like a complete fool, and I will not be showing this on the video tonight, I do like the weirdest like speed walk thing that I could possibly do. And they all giggle at that. They think it's hilarious. And I say, oh my goodness, wasn't that the weirdest walk? Let me try a new one. And I do like another weird like version. But I say, the weirder the better. How fun is that? Oh my gosh, let's try it. So whoever gets to be Charlie, you you can't run after me. You have to do a weird, funny speed walk after me. Like the weirdest, wiggliest speed walk you can possibly do. And I encourage like funny, fun, exciting, so they're not running and smashing into stuff because that is inevitably what would happen. Um, Maybe has happened to be in the past. Not going to confirm that. Anyway, so we do a silly speed walk. They love it. I had planned to go outside, but it's like heat index 110 in Kansas these last couple weeks. So like we didn't do that. Otherwise, we maybe would be doing the running version. But this version is, it keeps us in the air conditioning and I think is just as fun. I'll be honest. It's, it's a pretty funny version. So we do Charlie over the ocean. Um, and then if we have time um, at the end of my class, hold on, let me pull up my other version of these lessons. Um, if we have time at the end of the class, we'll do Little Sally Walker, which is um, what I what I want to get into in the next lesson. Usually my kids had enough time to learn the basics of Little Sally Walker um, or Little Sally Water. There are a lot of versions of that game if you know that song. Um, and it's a, it's a fun song. Now, one of the things that I'm doing after Charlie Over the Ocean is out in the hallway, I'm planning on putting up these posters. Um, and this is part of a, a favorite folk song set that I made several years ago. And the idea of this is like, you can use this as a teaching aid when you teach it, and then you can put it out in the hallway as like a bulletin board to reinforce when you're done. So what does it have? It has the name of the song. It has where it came from. As far as I can track it back as you know, where I think it came from. It talks about what a folk song is. Um, more details about that song, the year it was first written down, what kind of game it is. Um, it's got all these little details. And then it has some other things like vocabulary, like C versus C, S-E-A versus S-E-E. And then it's an echo song and whatever. So the, the nice thing is you can use this when you're teaching it. If you want, you can project it up on the board. There's a PowerPoint version in there, but you can also use it as a bulletin board reinforcement afterward. Okay, cool. Let's jump ahead. Ooh, and one more thing. Um, as I'm doing all these lessons, I have this thing that I made a couple years ago. It's a freebie on my Teachers Pay Teacher store, and it's called a song and poem map. Basically, um, I just go through and wrote, write like what I'm teaching and when. So that like later in the year, be like, did I teach that song already? I can go back and like, I, I've even color coded like purple is songs, green is poems, um, pink is like concepts, blue is dances, or blue is books, orange is dances, whatever. But it helps me like write down like what I've done. I have this for every grade level, um, and I do this so that I can keep easy track of like what I've taught and when. And so it's really helpful, especially as I'm like planning this year, I can look at last year or two years ago, my song and poem map, and then I'm not flipping through individual lessons, I'm just seeing like what I taught and when. I'll tell you, I've been using it for three or four years, it is very helpful. <laughs> It's like an index of what you taught, when you taught it, in what order you taught it. And it's really helpful, like I said, when you're um, planning years down the road. It's free. It's on my Teachers Pay Teachers store. It's linked on the links page. Good times. Okay, third and fourth and fifth grade. Let's get into it. Third grade, the first time I see them, we do this song. Um, so, let me get my ukulele. Circle around the zero. Circle round the zero, find your love at zero. Back, back, zero, side, side, zero. Front, front, zero, find your love and zero. Of course, I'm singing low. With my kids, I'd be singing, circle round the zero, find your love and zero. About a, a 
partway into the year, I start talking about adult voice versus kid voice, whatever, and I start um, doing more demonstrations in my um, changed voice. Um, but at this point in the year, just the first couple of lessons, I'm doing a lot of a lot more falsetto. I'm also a tenor. I'm comfortable with that. If you're a male teacher, let's chat about <laughs> when and how you should do different um, do falsetto versus uh, full voice. But anyway, I'm doing falsetto now. Um, we do circle around the zero. It's a super fun song. There's a there's a whole game to it where. Um, you can um, slowly get kids to match you and, and add more. I've talked about that in a previous year. Um, I'm going to not talk about it right now and take up extra time, but I know that that's in previous videos um, if you want to see it, a longer version of that song. Um, we, uh, we do going on a picnic. So this is something that I'm doing with multiple grades. I think I'm doing it with second, third, and fifth. Um, and it's more or less successful depending on the grade and takes more or less time depending on the grade. But it is fun. It is another way to do a name game. And kids don't get tired of it. They think it's a, a fun thing to be able to do. Um, and then we start on um, the song My Mama Was a Baker at the end of our first day in the first week in third grade. My mama was a baker, a baker, a baker. My mama was a baker and this is what she'd say. Mm, mm. And we rub our tummy for that. And then we do. My daddy was a garbage man, a garbage man, a garbage man. My daddy was a garbage man and this is what he'd say. Hey, you. Mm, mm because dad, we did the daddy part, but then we also have to, mommy pops out and goes, don't forget me, and you have to put in mm, mm. And so it's a cumulative song with every verse, you add one more person, you add a new action, you, you, you list them out. By the time you're done, you could have six or seven different people with six or seven different actions. I make this um, like a tie-in. One of the things in Kansas is a focus on, probably everyone, uh, college and careers and readiness and whatever. So we talk about their jobs, what they do. We also have a career fair later on in the year, so there's a fun tie into that. Um, but we we talk about what you know, what does a baker do? What do they make? What are some of the things you might make if you're at a bakery? Blah blah blah. And for each different thing, we give more details and and context about that job. So it does take a little bit longer. In the second lesson, they come in, they know circle around the zero, so we just run through and do it a couple times. We do our seating chart spots. I take pictures of kids for my um, seating charts, and then we finish My Mama Was a Baker. That's basically all I have time for. But it's like a rehash of that first lesson, getting some of those complicated management things out of the way, the seating charts, and knowing your spot, and getting picture, and then finishing out the song that we had started in the previous lesson. In 30 minutes, there's not a lot of time, so <laughs> it works pretty well. When they come in on for our second week first lesson, um, I have them do a cir make a circle, and we do a song from Shenanigans. Um, if you're familiar with Shenanigans, um, called "Walking to the Left," it's really easy, and the the actions are: uh, you go left for eight beats, you go right for eight beats, and then you do this clapping pattern. We go walking in and clap, walking out and clap, walking in and clap, walking back then stop. Right, so it's move to the left, move to the right, and then walk in and out. It's easy. The first time you go walking in and clap, walking out and clap, walking in and clap, walking out and clap. The second time you go walking in and clap, walking out and clap, walking in and clap, walking out and clap. The third time you go walking in and clap, and then, so the kids think a pattern like, ooh, great. So what do you think we're going to do the fourth time? They like walking in and clap. But actually, it goes walking in and clap, walking out and clap. And the fifth time goes walking in and clap, walking out and clap. So there is a pattern. It goes first time once, second time twice, third time three times, fourth time two claps, last time one clap. So it's one, two, three, two, one. And then they the, the great thing about this song is it's simple. It teaches the actions as you go. You can do it later. There's a second version where you can do in concentric circles, but that's real tricky for my kids right now. Um, but it's a great sort of like, welcome back. This is easy. Not a lot of touching. You don't have to do held hands if you don't want to, but it's easy for them to do fun movement and simple. We uh, learn our instrument families. So uh, one of the things I do with all my grades two through five is I give them a team and the team is either named strings, percussion, woodwinds, or brass. I did a whole blog post about this. I linked it on um, the links page so that 
all throughout the year, the kids have a team. They know what they're going to go to. If we ever need to do like, you know, separate the class, I can easily say strings and brass over here, woodwinds and percussion over here. Like it's a, it's such a shorthand for like making teams, making groups. If I want eight groups, I just say like, okay, half of strings here, half of strings here, half of brass here, half of brass. It's a, it's just so simple for classroom management. It's reinforcing the instrument families. Um, it, and I, so read that blog post if you're interested in doing that. Um, I know a lot of people who've tried it with varying levels of success and it's fun. Kids like it. So that we, we learn on this day, we learn which family we're a part of and we go sit on the colorful line that matches our family. And then if we have time, we learn part of the Grumpy March, which is a New England Dancing Masters um, favorite of mine. You can find it in, I don't remember which book. Um, if, if you're watching and can comment and know, it's one of the New England Dancing Masters books. I can look it up if you're interested. But super fun song called The Grumpy March. And I, I always, I love using this at the beginning of the year because I say, you know, the other day a kid came in. I said, we're going to do a dance. And he said, I don't want to. I feel like I'm in a bad mood. And I said, great, because this song is called The Grumpy March. Perfect for you. Be as grumpy as you want. And then as we're going, the, you know, we'll learn different actions. The kids will go, go, no giggling, no smiling. This is grumpy only. And then that makes them giggle more. And then it, it sort of passes off that like uncomfortability of like we're touching or whatever, or we're moving together. I have to work with a partner. Then it's more like, oh, we get to be grumpy about it. And they think that's fun and funny. Liz, I see your comment here on Facebook. You said, walking in and clap, where can I find this? Um, it's from an artist called Shenanigans. I think that it's on Spotify, but I know you can buy it. It's from their album, like, um, Terrace Australia's Best of 1980 to 1990 or something. But if you just search Shenanigans and you search um, walking to the left, you should be able to find it. Cool. And then the Grumpy March is New England Dancing Masters. Um, in the last class of the week, of that second week, we come in and we do Walking to the Left. But this time, we've, we've done it already. So this time I do the version of the track where there aren't auditory commands. Where he usually, on the first version, he goes, Walking to the left we go, not too fast and not too slow. Walking to the left we go, and now go to the right. Walking to, and then there's a version without that prompt. And so the second time I say, do you remember how to do it? You know, we go to the left, then we go to the right, and we go in and clap. Do you know where it is? <sighs> He's not going to tell you. I hope you know. I hope you can do it. And so we, we try it. Um, we do, we talk about our families again, and then we finish out the Grumpy March. And that's basically all we have time for. But by that time in that second lesson, we've done the Grumpy March enough that we know it well enough, we can actually do it with music. The first time, first day, we did not, because we did not know it well enough. <laughs> Uh, fourth grade. Hooray. Let's get to fourth grade. Fourth grade, I start with the song Chester. Chester, have you heard about Harry? Just got back from the army. I hear he knows how to wear his clothes. Hip, hip, hooray for the army. Kids learn it. We sing it. And then I change the words to uh, Chester, have you eared about Harry? Chest got back from the arm. Me, I ear he knows how to wear his clothes. Hip, hip, hooray for the arm. Me. And so the, the, the actions are linked with body parts. And so we learn the actions that go along with that and point to those parts of our body as we sing. Um, they think it's super fun and silly. And it's a good sort of start to the year. Um, a great little song. We do the name game, jump in, jump out, the one that goes, jump in, jump out, turn yourself around. I said, jump in, jump out, introduce yourself. And probably a lot of you are like, I know that one I've done a hundred times, <laughs> I'm tired of it. But I like it. I'd only do it with one grade because I can only handle so much jumping in and jump out. One time I did it with three grades in a year and I was jumping like all morning. No, can't, <laughs> I can't do that. So one of the, the prompt for kids is you have to know your name. You have to know something you like. So the B section of that song goes, my name is David. Yeah. And I like coffee. Yeah, I'm going to drink it. Yeah, for the rest of my life. For the rest of your life. So it's like a call back and forth between one kid soloist and the whole group. I do a bunch of demos before I ever ask a kid to do it, just to like give them a universe. So I'd be like, my name's Mr. Al. Yeah, and I like Star Wars. Yeah, I'm going to watch it. Yeah, for, and then the kids do the other part. Super fun, easy to teach. If you've never heard this one ever before, there are like a hundred blog posts about it and a bunch of other videos. So I'll let you go and research those. I won't talk you through it right now. I've also, I think it last year talked about this or two years ago. So I've also done it. So you can go find it. In the second day they come in. Um, oh, and that's basically all we have time for by the time we're done. 
The second day they come in, we do Chester again. We just do a version that this time we uh, speed up. So I sit down at the piano and I play. Chester, have you eared about Harry? Just got back from the army. I ear he knows. And then, then I keep playing and I slowly speed up. I slowly speed up. I slowly speed up until we're going really, really fast. They think it's hilarious. It gives me a chance to go talk about the word wall, the vocabulary wall, point out where Accelerando is. What does that mean? And it's just like a way to like, hey, here's the word wall. We're using it. And here's one word that we're using today. We do that and then um, we come back and we learned one of my favorite songs, um, which is really fun. I'm doing in fourth and fifth grade right now, or was in this last couple weeks. Um, it's a song from Japan. It's a, a clapping game and it talks about making um, this Japanese, traditional Japanese food called mochi. To start, I don't talk about that. I say, I have this cool dessert I want to tell you about. And I found a video of someone who makes mochi on YouTube and it's this video where this this guy is talking about how he's made it for like 25 years and mochi is is crushed rice basically that you add flavoring to and some other stuff and they pound it with hammers and it's like you pound with a hammer and then one person reaches in and moves it or changes it or adds water to it or whatever and it's like back and forth but it's like ba -ba 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 -ba. it's like super fast where like one person could have their finger smushed crushed <laughs> and they reach in at the wrong time and so what they do is they like have this rhythm this shouting rhythm so that they don't ever reach in while the hammer is coming down so they've learned this rhythm so that they can do it super fast um, the video that I show kids is super cool it's actually in Japanese so I read them the subtitles as we go along um, but it's it's great and gives a lot of really cool cultural context and then in the first day, we learn the poem. And the poem goes, Omochi o tsuki masho, Omochi o tsuki masho, Petanko, Petanko, Petan, Petan, Petanko. Konote, 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 Ton, 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 Ton. In the links page, I added the video I showed kids. I added a blog post to where you can find all the words for this and a potential teaching process and also what those words mean. I also added, um, well, I'll tell you in a second, um, a video of the demo of how this works. Eventually the kids, you learn the words and when we learn the words, I just have them keep a steady beat and I say, oh my gosh, pretend one hand is like the bowl with the mochi and the other hand is just the hammer. And so let's do the poem again. Here we go. Omochi yo tsuki ma. So on the first day, all they're learning is just the steady beat with the poem. And that's it. The next time when they come in, um, we, I show them another video and it's a video of um, someone who makes mochi in Hawaii and how her family uh, moved to Hawaii from Japan and she talks about how she's infused like Hawaiian flavors into the mochi to make it special for that area. Um, so there's like persimmon and um, pineapple and strawberry and whatever flavors from the island in this mochi. It's another short like two minute video but gives all this great cultural context on what it is and I said like if we were here in Kansas what flavors would we add that would make our own Kansas kind of mochi? What would we do? And so we talk about that and it's fun. Then we take the, pa the poem, we do it again, oh mochi, and then there's a new action and this is another action which again is explained in the video that I posted and it goes um, Omochi o tsuki masho, omochi o tsuki masho, petan ko, petan ko, petan, petan, petan ko. Konote, 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 ton, 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 ton. It looks super dumb when I'm doing it by myself, but we te I teach the kids those actions independent of anything else. And then once I feel like they've got it really good, I say, did you know you have a professional mochi maker here? And they're like, what? Yes. And I bring up a kid who I know is really good with the steady beat. <laughs> and I have them just stand there and keep the steady beat. And then my actions fit in their actions. I can, and it's, it's all about reaching in at the right time. And if you have the poem in your head and you've got it all memorized, you can just, your hands, you reach in. And so it's like, you're like the mochi maker reaching in between the falling hammer. And it's super cool when it comes together. Um, there's a video, like I said, online of, of a kid and a teacher doing it. Um, and you can also, there are lots of versions of this, um, but it's a, a super fun where then the kids we pair off and one kid gets to be the hammer and one kid gets to be the mochi maker. They love it. We do it this day and in the next lesson they come back and we do, um, we learn our families, uh, the family for classroom management, and then we do Omochia one more time. Um, and this time again, it's just in pairs and they get to switch off jobs so that they get the chance to be the mixer and the chance to be the masher. They love it. 
It's hilarious. Also, I have had several students come up to me and said, we found mochi at Walmart and we had it and it's good. Because there are a couple different kinds. There's like the traditional kind, which is just like um, the sort of the dough with like stuff in it, sometimes stuffed with fruit or beans or um, other flavors. And then the more common version you'll find like in America around here is a version you find in the, the ice cream section that has like a scoop of ice cream in it. Um, I don't know that that's as traditional, but that's the kind my kids like better. They don't really like the gummy kind. They like the kind with like the ice cream in it. So I've had some parents email me and be like, why are you sending my kid to the ice cream section? Haha, <laughs> just kidding. They told me the whole story. They've only been saying this poem for the last two hours. So we went and bought some mochi. Thanks a lot. <laughs> but it's super fun when then the kids are excited. Like, I found it at Price Chopper. I found it at Costco. I found it at Aldi. It's pretty much everywhere if you look in the ice cream section or if you have like a... Um, my local grocery store has like an Asian market section and they have it in a refrigerated case there. So anyway, that sort of sums out the last, the last of my couple weeks with um, those kiddos. Fifth grade is very similar. It's just, again, an extension of what we've done in other grades. Um, the first couple weeks they come in, we do, uh, we do a back and forth poem that comes from Orf Schulwerk volume. So I'm not going to share that with you today. Um, I'm still working on how I like it. It's something I've added in sort of on my own. So I'll come back with that maybe another day. We do that picnic poem one more time. Again, it's a more advanced version of it. They're able to pick it up a lot more quickly. Um, so it's super easy to do. <clears throat> they come in, um, the second day of, of that first week, um, we do something I do with like my kindergarten and first grade where it's a steady beat with the magic word. So like they have to keep the beat and then I might move the beat to my shoulders, but they can't move from their head to their shoulders until they hear me say whatever the magic word is. I talked about this last week with like, I think my first grade lesson. I'm doing it again for fifth grade again to like get them listening, to sort of trick them. You can do a more advanced, more complicated version of it and they think it's hilarious. They love it. Um, but again, it's like, you're just keeping a steady beat. It's still good to make sure fifth graders can do that because they can't always. Um, and then we, you know, they get to choose the magic word. They think it's hilarious. Um, we do our dot spots. We take our pictures for our seating charts. Sounds a lot like some of my other grades. Um, in the second week, first lesson, we start Omochio as well. And I, this is one of those things where this is my second year in the building. It's my first year where we're doing more like interaction together and more singing and stuff. So there are some times where like you might hear me on my Musical Monday say like, I'm doing this with two grades. I don't usually do that because I like to, well, I mean, you can do it however you want. I don't like to do the same thing with two grades because I, I don't want them to hear it a second time and be bored with it. But because like, this is something I would normally put in fourth grade, but because they didn't get it last year, I'm giving it to them again. And also it's fun. And also they're going to, they're going to enjoy it. It's a good back to school thing. Um, and then by the end of the week, then we're ready to move on to other things um, and, and do more advanced versions. Again, I'm taking the Omochio. I'm using um, the poems and the, or sorry, the poem, the video and the process, basically the same thing with fourth and fifth grade. I'm just changing a little bit. My fifth graders today, they picked it up a lot faster. Um, they were able to do multiple partners. They were able to do like demos for the class. We did a bunch of switching. By the time my fifth graders were done today, they had done it with like three separate people. Usually the first time with Omochio, I say like find someone you know you can trust who won't smash your hand. Right? And so um, what I say is, uh, by today is like, well, you can do it with anyone because you're so good at it now. So it's, again, another just sort of more advanced version of, of what I did with fourth grade. Okay, I sort of got through all of the lessons. I knew it was going so fast. Sorry. I'm going to get better with pacing these so that I share more. I'm going to try and do my K through five lessons every week um, with you and share just what we did that week. Um, I am going to be back next Monday night, even though it's Labor Day. I'm going to be back. I'm going to be sharing my lessons and I'm going to share what we did um, in week three, hopefully through for all K through five. And I'll be able to get through all that and do a little bit more in depth. I was trying to pack it all in this week. Um, like I said, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them on the feed and I'll try and find them. Or if you send me a direct message, that's cool too. You can find me on that Facebook group, Every Moment Matters Music Education Community, whatever. If you have a question, please reach out. I'd love to try and answer that. Um, like I said, there are also a lot of things on that links page on my blog. If you're like, where's that video you're talking about? It's in the links page. It's on my LinkedIn profile. It's you know at the bottom of the, ca the caption. You can find it and go there or just go to my blog under the videos tab. You'll be able to find it there too. Okay, I hope you were able to hear this. I hope my mic's working. 
I hope you uh, got some lesson ideas or at least sort of saw the progression of how things work this week. I'm going to be back again next Monday night to give you a little bit more of what I've been doing in the following week to share some of these fun things I've used and some of the um, resources along the way. I hope this was helpful. Thanks so much for joining me tonight and I'll see you next week. Bye everyone. Bye.